How many millionaires do you know who have become wealthy by investing in savings accounts? Says Robert Allen. Though investing in a savings account is a sure bet, your gain will be minimal due to the extremely low interest rates. But don't forego one completely. A savings account is a reliable place for an emergency fund, whereas a market investment is not. Hello and welcome. In today's video, I'm analyzing Castrol India. The market cap of the company is 12,938 crores. Current price is 131 and it is very near to its 52 week highest price point of 162 rupees compared to the low it had reached of around 89. The current price to earnings is 19 times that is you are paying 19 times more than the profits earned per share of the latest quarter or the recent 12 months. The book value is 12 rupees whereas the current price is 131 so it's trading at an extreme premium to its book value of more than 10 times dividend yield is 4.2 percent if someone is interested in dividends then they can invest in this company it's providing a good dividend but then along with dividend is the price or the investment value is also growing or not that is important to check on the total capital employed it's generating almost 90 percent of profits or a bit Whereas on the net worth or shareholders money, it is generating around 65% of net profit. So these are extremely high values and that is why it's getting such a high price to book ratio. Face value is 5, price to cash is 14 times. So both price earning and price cash are at a good valuations. But the return on equity has, been, has seen a degrowth of almost 3% over the last 5 years. Although the ROE itself is very high, but this ROE is dropping at the rate of around 3% since the last 5 years compounded. The earnings per share is 6 rupees 70 paise, whereas the current price is 131. That is, we are paying 19 times more than the profit of the recent 12 months to buy into this company. Not that expensive, at least price to earnings wise. Book value 3 years back was 10 rupees 30 paise. And currently it stands at around 12.8. So it has increased its net worth by around 20% or so over the three years. Market cap five years back was 24,000 and three years back around 18,000. And currently it stands at around 12,000. So investors have lost money from five years back and from three years back in this company. Number of equity shares currently is 98 crores and OPM margin is 28% over the last five years on average. So these are good margins that the company is earning. But on the investor's investment, the company has not generated returns. In fact, it has given a negative returns. That is, one year back, it is just 2.97% growth in the investments or our money. From three years back, it has in fact, has seen a degrowth of almost 12% and from five years back of almost 10%. So this company has not generated returns, although it's paying dividend, but then along with dividend, we also want growth in our investments. Company is debt free, company is debt free since last three years, and it's paying a very nominal interest cost of around just 3.7 crores. The debtor days have increased from 27 days, three years back to around 45 days currently. So this is also a negative because we want the debtor days either to be stable or decreasing company doesn't have investments in its books but has a cash equivalent but has a cash equivalent of almost 1100 crores against its total balance sheet size of 2100 crores so almost 50 percent of its balance sheet is in cash itself which is a very high percentage company's trade receivables and payables are very small around 10 percent compared to the balance sheet size so this is all right we we'll need to check trade receivables against the sales done or we we'll need to look at the turnover ratio that is debtors or sales turnover ratio working capital is 906 crores positive so this is good because they have enough assets to pay current liabilities assets or net block have gone up from where it was three years back from 147 to 221 crores not that substantial but it has gone up so company is investing in its assets market cap is around four times more than the revenue it is generating or sales it is doing in the recent 12 months so it's at available at a reasonable uh, valuation profits over the last five years is 3500 which is more than the balance sheet size it has and that is why we see 
a very high ROE and ROCE. So it's generating more profits than the its actual balance sheet size. Cash flows are around 3,400, again more than the balance sheet size. Free cash flows are also very high. So what it means is that there's no growth in the company, although it has huge in cash holding, but there's no growth in this company as can be seen from these numbers. Let us look at the positives. Company is debt free and provides a good dividend yield of 4.2%. ROE is extremely high over the last three years of 65%. It, uh, it pays out almost 78% of its profits to the shareholders. As we saw earlier also in the balance sheet, it has a huge, almost 50% of its balance sheet is in cash. So whatever profit it earns, it pays it back to the shareholders. Stock is trading at 10.23 times its book value, extremely high. But the sales has not seen a growth over the last five years of just 2.7%. So this is what I'm saying, if there is no growth in the company, although it will be trading at a high premium, but our va investment value will not go up. Data days have also increased from 37 to 45, which is okay, but we have to compare it with its peer group companies as well as uh, past year data. In the peer group analysis, I'm comparing Castrol with Navin Florin and Tata Chemicals. Current price for Castrol is 130, Navin is 2500 and Tata is around 490 rupees per share. Both Navin and Tata Chemicals have fallen or have a down by around 7% and just 1% for Tata Chemical from their 52 week highest point whereas Castrol is still down by around 20%. Results are up to date till March 2020 for both Navin and Tata whereas Castrol follows the calendar year of reporting. Quarterly, the data is up to date till September 2020 for all three companies. For Castrol, the overall revenue has grow gone up by around 3.9% from its previous year's quarter, whereas Navin has gained by around 16% and Tata has fallen by around 5.8%. Tata Chemicals profits have also fallen by around 64% from 285 crores to 70 crores in the recent quarter whereas both Castrol and Navin have seen a positive growth rate in their profits as well as in their sales. For the entire year of March 20 compared with the recent 12 months, Castrol has seen a degrowth in their sales from 3800 to 3000. In fact, all of these companies have seen a very nominal gain or in fact a degrowth in their revenues in the recent 12 months and so is it with the profits except for Navin which has increased its profits from 405 crores to 441 crores whereas Castrol has seen a degrowth in its profit from 827 to 666 even Tata Chemical has seen a degrowth in its profits in the recent 12 months in terms of cash flowing in Tata Chemical's cash is almost double of its profit declared in March 2020, 961 crores of profits and 1,780 crores of cash coming in through operations. So I like these kind of values. Whereas Naveen's cash flows are not coming in less than the profit declared. Castrol is generating almost equivalent of cash as shown in the, in the profit and loss account as profits. So Naveen's uh, cash flows are not coming in. So this needs to be looked into by going into the cash flow statement. The current price earning is 19 times for Castrol and 17 times for Tata. Whereas for Navin, it is very high at around 28 times and also above its average of the long terms. Castrol also over the long term was trading at a high valuations of 21 and 27. So currently it's below that. Tata Chemicals price earning over long term was around 7 and 12 whereas currently it's 17 so gone above its long term averages. I generally like to buy below 25 or around their averages of the long term. In terms of price to OCF, both Tata and Castrol are available at a good multiples whereas Naveen as we earlier saw that the amount of cash coming was very less in the 2020 so that is why its price to OCF is also extremely high at around 80 times. In terms of book value, both Castrol and Navin are trading at extremely high premium to its net worth or actual value of shares. Whereas 
Tata is trading at a discount to its book value. So this creates an opportunity provided there is growth in revenue and profits as well as good ROE, ROCEs. Let us look at the profit growth over the last five and three years, both Naveen and Gastrol are generating a double digit of growth rates in their profits of 11 and 51 percent. Whenever you see such high growth rate, look at individual values by going into the PL account and looking at the base value or the base year to understand how the profits have grown. This can mislead someone into investing, seeing very high profit growth rate. Anything about 20% needs to be reinvestigated. Tata Chemicals long term growth rate is low at around 3.76% whereas in last 3 years in fact the profits have seen a degrowth. In fact sales also over the long term has seen a degrowth. So this is the first sign of problems in a company where the revenues are decreasing from where it was 5 years back. The reason needs to be investigated as to why there is a degrowth in its revenues. Sales over the last 3 years is almost flat whereas Naveen is growing its revenues at around 12% since the last 5 and 3 years. Castrol's sales growth is also into positive territory so this is also good but very low. Return on equity for both ROE ROCs for both Naveen and Castrol are very high. In fact Castrol is even over the long term is earning or profits more than the total capital employed into the business. So this company Castrol is generating good profits but there is no growth in the company. Whereas Naveen is generating around a decent ROC but it has a growth in its revenues of around 12% and profits are also growing at a very high growth rate but this as I mentioned earlier needs to be rechecked. Tata Chemicals ROE of the latest year was 7.6% very low even half of its average of 14 times 14%. Time, 14%. Whereas in terms of return on capital employed, that is how much profits generated or EBIT it generated on its net worth plus borrowings was around 7.65% and way below its long term averages of 11%. Return on assets over the long term has been very high for Castro at around 78%. So on its total assets or balance sheet size, what was the net profit it is earning is almost 78%. Whereas Naveen's ROA is also high at around 18%. Tata Chemicals is also generating a good ROA of around 6.7% on everything employed into the business. Asset turnover measures what is the capital employed and against that how much sales the company is doing. So Castrol is generating almost 2.8 times more revenue than the total capital employed into the business. So this is a good valuation the higher the better. Whereas Naveen and Tata Chemicals both are generating less returns or uh, are generating less sales than the total assets employed into the business. In terms of inventory turnover, both Castrol and Flo Naveen Florin both have done good of generating higher revenue against the inventory holding in the balance sheet. Tata Chemicals either inventory holding is way too high or its sales is low. So this needs to be rechecked. Profits over long term of 5 years for Castrol was 3500, cash generated was 3400, very near to the PAT declared and the free cash flow was 3168. So the company's entire profits are moving into the free cash flow zone and uh, therefore it is paying such a high dividend uh, payout. Naveen's profits over the last 5 years was 948, cash coming in was 584, less than the profit declared and free cash flow is also very less of 183 crores. Uh, generally uh, until unless there is a very high growth and the company is generating good returns if these ratios don't match up then I don't like to invest. If you don't understand any of these ratios you can check out my older videos which are around one and a half hour long where I have explained in detail each ratio what it means its significance and how to understand them. So you can check it out in the description section that I have given the link of those playlists. Alternatively you can go into playlist option also and watch the videos from there. Tata Chemical over the last 5 years has generated 7000 crores of profits, 11000 crores of cash and 6700 crores of free cash. So I like this these kind of numbers for uh, my companies. 
एवरेज पैट फॉर कैस्ट्रोल इज सेवन हंड्रेड क्रोर्स एवरी ईयर नवीन फ्लोरिन वन एटी नाइन एंड टाटा केमिकल्स फोर्टीन हंड्रेड सो प्रॉफिट वाइज टाटा केमिकल इज द हाइस्ट प्रॉफिट जनरेटिंग कंपनी इन दीज थ्री मार्केट कैप वाइज ऑल थ्री कंपनीज आर ट्रेडिंग एट एन इक्विवेलेंट ऑफ अराउंड ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड क्रोर्स बट नेटवर्थ वाइज टाटा केमिकल्स इज थर्टीन थाउजेंड क्रोर कंपनी येट इट इज़ नॉट गेटिंग प्रीमियम वैल्यूशन इन द मार्केट वेर इज नवीन जस्ट अ फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड क्रोर कंपनी इज ट्रेडिंग एट अराउंड ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड क्रोर इन द मार्केट ऑलमोस्ट एज गुड एज टाटा केमिकल्स नेटवर्थ वाइज ऑल्सो कैस्ट्रॉल इज वेरी लो एट वन थाउजेंड टू सिक्सटी फोर कम्पेयर टू इट्स मार्केट कैप ट्रेडिंग इन द कम्पेयर टू द प्राइज इट इज ट्रेडिंग इन द मार्केट करंटली कंटिजेंट लाइबिलिटी फॉर कैस्ट्रॉल इज जस्ट फोर्टी टू क्रोर्स एंड फोर्टी थ्री क्रोर्स फॉर नवीन अ वेरी नॉमिनल अमाउंट वेर एज टाटा केमिकल्स कंटिजेंट लाइबिलिटी इज ऑलमोस्ट टेन परसेंट ऑफ इट्स नेटवर्थ सो ऑल दीज थ्री कंपनीज हैव डन वेल इन टर्म्स ऑफ कंटिजेंट लाइबिलिटी टाटा केमिकल्स डेट टू इक्विटी रेशियो इज पॉइंट फाइव दैट इज इट्स डेट इज फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ इट्स इक्विटी एंड देर फॉर इट्स कवरेज इज ऑल्सो फॉल इन बिलो दी फोर फोर टाइम्स ऑफ माई बेंच मार्क विच आई डोंट लाइक इंटरेस्ट कवरेज फॉर नवीन एंड कैस्ट्रॉल इज क्वाइट हाई बिकॉज दे डोंट हैव एनी डेट ऑन देयर बुक्स प्रोमोटर होल्डिंग फॉर कैस्ट्रॉल इज फिफ्टी वन नवीन इज थर्टी परसेंट एंड टाटा केमिकल्स थर्टी फाइव परसेंट सो दिस इज स्टिल गुड अब एनीथिंग अब थर्टी परसेंट इज कंसिडर्ड गुड Navin's promoters have pledged around three percent, whereas Castrol and Tata Chemical promoters haven't pledged any of their shares. So anything less than twenty percent is okay. In terms of debtors to sales ratio, Navin Florin's debtors to sales is very high at around twenty-four percent. My benchmark or cutoff is around thirty. So I don't want the total customers from whom the company has to collect payment to exceed thirty percent of the to the current year's sales value. Tata Chemicals debt to sales is also low at around 13 and Castrol at 7.3 so the lower the better it shows efficiency of the management Castrol is taking around 45 days to collect payment from its customers Navin around 75 very near to my benchmark of 90 and Tata Chemicals 55 so the lower the better that is the, it shows efficiency the, how fast the companies how fast the company is collecting payment from its customers Net profit margin for Castrol in 2020 was 21 percent, Navin Florin at 38 percent. So both of these companies have are generating good profits on the revenue they are earning every year. Tata Chemicals NPM margin has fallen below my benchmark of 10. Our dividend yield for Castrol is 4.2 percent, uh, considered high, and we also saw that it's generating good profits. So all of the profits is being given out to the shareholders. Tata Chemicals is also providing a decent 2.2 percent of dividend yield, whereas Navin Florin is not providing any dividend yield. So, in conclusion, what do I like in these three companies? Castrol is a good company but doesn't have growth. Navin Florin has a growth, but they are uh, they are growing by credit sales. That is almost 24 percent of their sales is still pending to be collected in the current balance sheet. so i don't like that one way all this a debt free company and all ratios are good but it's also trading at a very high premium tata chemicals doesn't have that high growth rate and uh, there are other issues also in this company in the market also it's not getting a premium valuations and in fact it's trading at a discount to its book value all it creates an opportunity but we also want growth in uh, terms of sales and profits earlier we saw both sales and profits are seen a degrowth although it's generating good amount of cash holding so i would look at all of these three companies provided uh, they fit into the technical chart as well which we'll check out next looking at the rsi technical chart my buying would start at around 118 approximately and from there on going down i would buy all these dips at the different support and resistance levels I have on the chart drawn lines support and resistance lines where one can buy and sell starting at 118 and 123 these are the two levels that we can target for buying going down 104 and 95 which it had come somewhere in april 2020 during the pandemic and even recently in october 2020 right now it is high at around rsi 60 and 50 
I feel around 134 would be a resistance for this company if it does break this 134 potential upside is around 160 rupees because there's no resistance whatsoever till 160 from 134 onwards so 134 would be a crucial level and from there on another 30 rupees or so of gain for short term so this concludes my detailed analysis of castrol india with tata chemicals and navin florin thank you very much for watching this video consider subscribing if you like the video thank you